Hello friends, happy Friday, and the happy one it is because it's actually not Friday. You're seeing this on Friday, but I'm actually taking Friday off, so I'm recording this on Thursday afternoon, and it's a beautiful Thursday. I'm hoping that it's also going to be a beautiful Friday because the reason I'm taking the day off is it's my dear wife's birthday and we're gonna try to do something fun this weekend maybe a beach trip not sure yet but I sure hope we have uh, some nice weather the past couple days have been really nice a break both from the uh, relentless heat and the relentless rain odd that those things came together but they were sort of tag team partners But as you can see, it is a bright sunny day, and I am going to go home. So, wound up working. You know, normally I try to sneak out a little bit early on days like this, but I had so much to do, and with taking the day off tomorrow, I had to get a bunch of stuff lined up. And anyway, it's it's actually like quarter to six already. I'm hoping the traffic will be a bit lighter than usual. We shall see. So today, I spent a lot of time, actually past couple days, <laughs> thinking about wax. And not for reasons you might be expecting. So I... I will often bring my lunch to work and I have lunch with co-workers and they bring their lunch and you know, I bring a sandwich usually and I wrap it in wax paper. I like, I like wax paper. I use it for a lot of things. It's a useful product. It's reliable. It's been around for a long time. It's reasonably priced and it always does exactly what I need it to do. So I started noticing these people bringing their sandwiches wrapped up in what looks like a dirty dish towel. Um, it turns out it's actually like a cheesecloth type material that's been soaked in beeswax and it has like a honeycomb design printed on it. And, and I start seeing more and more of these things. You know, there are these wax cloth sandwich wrapper things and that's fine yeah but they, they're becoming quite common so I'm having lunch with two co-workers and they both have them and you know so this leads to the inevitable oh you have one too kind of conversation that I can't be a part of because I don't have one and I just sit there listening and, and they're going back and forth about yeah you know my last one lasted this long and Oh, you should buy a three-pack, and they get crinkly. Well, all you have to do is a hair dryer, and, and I, I couldn't help myself. I said, you know, guys, they do sell this wax paper in rolls, and uh, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't uh, received very well. Don't you want to save the planet? So how exactly are you saving the planet? Well, I'm not using wax paper. You know, I'm, this is re reusable. You're throwing that away. That's bad for the environment. Oh. Wax paper is made from two things. Wax and paper. Paper 
in the United States at least, is entirely produced from trees that were planted by the paper industry in the United States. They replace every tree that they harvest. Paper is biodegradable. The wax is a paraffin-based wax. It's petroleum distillate. You gotta do something with the stuff because you're making gasoline anyway. So you got a, a cheap biodegradable product that what why what is the problem with that? Now these people and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna generalize here uh, to other things. I mean you've you've all seen this plastic straw debacle that's been going on. They really don't understand Everything's on a, based on emotion now. And the fact that these people feel good about what they're doing, you know, they're saving the planet, that's more important than understanding what they're actually doing. Now let's think about it. Wax Paper Incorporated, whoever that is, has been around a long time. They have making wax paper down to a science. They have distribution channels laid out all over the country, maybe all over the globe. I don't know. Maybe Wax Paper Incorporated is a global conglomerate. I don't know. But the point is there's very, very little waste in what they're doing. So this person says, well, I'm doing my part by not buying wax paper. No. I, I don't think that Wax Paper Incorporated like checks every month and says, oh, wait, Sally's not buying a roll, make one roll less. It doesn't work that way. A, a very large number of people would have to decide not to buy Wax Paper before that would change anything in any way. And it's not going to happen. You're not doing your part. What you're actually doing is you're creating an entire second industry that is harvesting beeswax and is spinning cotton and weaving cheesecloth and melting beeswax and soaking and making inks to print the pattern on it and then you got to print the pattern and then you got to package it and then after you package it you have to ship it and you're shipping it to distributors who then ship it again because you're buying it online you are you are actually creating a bigger problem than you're trying to solve and this happens a lot because we're basing our actions on emotions it feels good to use the product that you think is saving the planet but you're actually hurting the planet it feels good to look down on people that might want to use a plastic straw to enjoy a nice drink. But the straw is the least of our worries. You know, if you really wanted to have an impact, organize a group of people to go clean up the beach. How about lobby the police to be more aggressive at enforcing the anti-littering laws? When's the last time you saw somebody get arrested for littering? There are things you can do. Passing legislation to ban soda straws is not useful. And it's for the same reasons, you know, we're going to use paper straws, all well, the paper straws don't hold up, so they're going to have to be wax-coated paper straws, and then you so now it, it, it just creates another industry. And honestly, the people making the plastic straws are going to keep on making the plastic straws because somebody's going to buy them. And the reason I thought about talking about this today, the, the reason this popped into my head, is that I was watching one of uh, Artie's videos. Uh, you know, Art uh, Pipes and Spirits or Artie's Place or whatever his name is now. 
I'll, I'll put a name down below, but uh, I'll put a link down below. But uh, Art's great, and you, you should be watching him. He's been doing these driving videos similar to what I'm doing here, uh, but he does them much more frequently, and I love it. I, I think it's a great way to to do these videos I, to 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 create content because you're completely un in, in, in pin, un in, uninhibited uninhibited by by any um, thoughts of oh I got to be looking at the camera oh I've got to be doing no it, it's I got to be focused on driving and that's the most important thing that and keeping this lit properly and you can see it's not burning right so it, it really frees you up to just say what's on your mind anyway Art was talking about uh, similar things. Nanny state tobacco regulate regi Nanny state and tobacco regulations. It's not really the word I'm looking for either, is it? Anyway, restrictions on what you can and can't say, and and, all, and he made a really interesting point. He said, "Why aren't we worried about sugar?" Sugar is doing more damage to people than nicotine and tobacco ever did, and he's right. You know, there, there's a epidemic of a, a epidemic of epidemic. You know, maybe this uh, talking without thinking isn't a good thing for me today. There is an epidemic of obesity in this country. I'm right in the group, um, as many of you guys are as well, and that is very much driven by carbohydrates. So when is the government going to start regulating carbohydrates? When are we going to start seeing regulations on marijuana? Which, you know, in terms of tar and You know, the carcinogenic products produced by smoke, they are not limited to tobacco products. You've got just as much a risk of getting oral cancer smoking marijuana as you've got smoking a cigar. So when when is the government going to start regulating that and taxing it and everything? Uh, granted, it's a young industry. The taxes will come in time. But, uh, yeah, the reason why it's so popular to bash pipes, cigars, and other forms of tobacco has more to do with the fact that it makes the basher feel good. They're doing something good for us. They're taking care of us poor souls. And it has nothing to do with whether or not their efforts are actually having any positive impact. And I would argue that they really haven't. You know, smoking rates are down. I mean, we're talking about cigarette smoking now. But that was a, a trend anyway. I don't think any of the nonsense that they've done since the massive tobacco settlements, you know, these ridiculous ads that they have where, you know, they, they pay these kids to, I don't know what they're doing, but they, they put them up as ads. It doesn't, they're not having any. What's having an impact is there's just been a, you know, there's there's a stigma, and people don't often like to do things that are stigmatized. But as soon as it, there's a way to make it cool, you know, with vaping, well, that explodes, right? Because you haven't changed the people. You haven't actually done anything other than make it harder for people that would normally be enjoying something to enjoy it. Uh, crazy at any rate guys I should uh, I should get off of here because I need to I need I need to actually pick up dinner tonight and I'm afraid that I might have missed my turn wouldn't that be something anyway folks Thanks for listening. I always enjoy uh, 
these, these talks, and I, I hope that you get some enjoyment out of them as well. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.